Hello and welcome to the Dad and Barry podcast. As always, my name is Mike, aka Dad and Barry, and I'm joined by my co-host Pete. How's it as going, always. Pete? Not as always, because a lot of times it's my wife. My wife. As all, as always, <laughs> <laughs> a much better co-host, mind you. So it is um, December 30th, and we are doing kind of the end of year. Um, good and bad of, of parenting in 2020 is a lot of bad, not all bad. Um, What's to reflect that, on, Mike? I don't. One get of it. the things that was bad was that we actually recorded this last <laughs> week and he didn't hit the record button. So, <laughs> so this is the second time we've done an an hour plus uh, podcast, but this this time you'll be able to hear it. I, I have to say. I'm excited to be doing this for the second time, if only because I'm loving the cardigan or robe or whatever you got. Yeah, robe. Was that a gift? It sure was, from me to me. (laughs) I I actually do like it. You look good. Yeah. Oh, nice. I thought I'd go for the uh, try out the grandpa look, and so it's suiting me, I think. I made a joke. Uh, I know you love it when I tell you the jokes I've made on Twitter. I made a joke a couple of weeks ago about how the, the quarantine or the pandemic has got me like Mr. Rogers, except when I enter or when I leave the bedroom, I switch from my good hoodie to my casual hoodie. Yeah, exactly. Right? Well, you're a professional, so I, I wear a lot of hoodies. Yeah. Now you just got to work on just the pants for the lower half. Like what's well, going to happen there? Is it going to remain underwear or is there going to be pants in 2021? What's what's the new what's what pants? I wear <laughs> uh, track pants and Mama Berry got me some pajama pants. What's funny is this morning, since tomorrow is New Year's Eve, and Mom and Barry loves to dress up and have events, um, even though it's just the four of us. She was like, you got to have to wear something nice tomorrow, maybe even Friday. And my 10-year-old heard that, and he goes, uh-oh. Because <laughs> nobody, I don't understand why we'd be doing this. She just likes to wear, like, things with sequins on them and things that sparkle. Yep. yep. I can't, and- I literally can't wear anything. Like, none of the clothes that I would, like, wear to work or in any kind of formal occasion fit me. I am so fat. Again. Or they none of them have sequins on it, or maybe just none some... of them have sequins. Oh, okay. Well, not a sequins guy. All right. Well, but, that's your. But loss. that was one of my. So I called this. Um, I think I said when I asked the question on Instagram, I asked for people's like parenting peaks and pits from uh, uh, 2020. And I know last time again, because this is our second time <sighs> recording this. Oh my last god! Time. I totally forgot. That's <laughs> what you call it. Peaks you and had pits. A big, Look, it's just an ice. It's just a catch-all. Term. How about highs and lows? Highs and but lows. That's what it's it real means. simple. It's just for no. children. Yeah, for children, it's even worse because peaks and pits are body parts that you can point to. Whereas highs and lows, what are you gonna do with that? What the fuck is a uh, peak? Is the peak of a mountain, and the pit is the pit of a pit. A pit is it's your armpit, part. obviously. The and peak? the peaks we could be think. anything. Could be between. Could be your nips. Could be your front. I got to be your... look looking at you in that robe. I got a peak going right. Now. <laughs> uh, yeah, boy, good. So good, one good. of my pits, okay, um, is the fact that I've literally like I've, I don't know that I've ever been this fat. Um, maybe like the freshman fifteen in college, but I was just smaller all around back then. Um, but I really think I've gained like twenty twenty five pounds from this thing. And, really? Uh, yeah. As, you, as really, you don't look. I gotta well, say, you don't look. Much one the camera the, has re- removed at least twelve of those pounds. One of the peaks is that it's not happening in my face, which is weird, but it's all in my gut. Like, <laughs> that's what happens once you like hit forty? I have yeah. like a huge belly now. Oh, nice. Um, that's good. Anyway, I'm gonna post a full frontal naked photo of myself on Instagram later. It's one of the New Year's treats. Yep, just to <laughs> shut shut the internet down, <laughs> so have everyone bleach their eyes and go home and but be with obviously, their family. Look, all jokes aside, uh, 2020 was was garbage in a lot of ways, pretty much from January forward. Um, but but we don't want this to be a total downer. So a lot of the comments I got, um, you know, there's negative stuff, obviously, but we're not focusing on kind of the big picture. There was a pandemic or Trump was president and the obvious stuff everybody knows is terrible. Um, we're instead focusing on some of the positive things and some of the small shitty things. Oh, wow. Look at how you did that. Some of the positive things and some of the really small shitty things that happened. <laughs> just, just well, that, what, like, a, what a blessing this podcast is to everybody. Just saying that nobody sent like major depressing stuff or major huge victories, right? Because right. we all had to kind of set the bar lower this year. Yep. And like somebody was like, you know, I successfully potty trained my kid. You know what? That's a pretty, go. pretty good peak for 2020. That's about as high as we're getting. Yeah. I think. 
Um, and let's just focus on calling it highs and lows and forget peaks and pits. So, uh, you know, there's lots of terms. Can we use the peaks and pits around the dinner table to try to get my kids to open up about their school days and make it a little fun for the kids? I know you feel like you're being condescended to, I guess. But with I just the, the term peaks and pits is uh, just is a poor substitute for highs and lows. Anyway, let's all it's all good. We can we can move past it. Um, I mean, I can't. Obviously, I'll be thinking about it for the next. <laughs> this week is one of your but... pits. Of <laughs> yeah, exactly. Using the term peaks and pits. All right. So we, we did get a, a, a bunch of comments, positive and negative um, from people. Um, we're going to go through those um, right after this. All right. All right, welcome back to the Dad and Barry podcast. We're going to be talking about the Pete's. The, the Pete's. Yes, the Pete's. <laughs> the Pits and Pete's Pete. of uh, 2020 in parenting. Um, I mentioned that one of my pits is how much, how out of shape I am and how much weight I've gained. Um, and it's funny because my gym is in my office building, um, which I haven't been to since March. Um, and rather than, than like get an elliptical machine or a, a not that I ever get a treadmill for my home, but my wife wants an elliptical machine. We might do something like that and use that during the nine months where we're stuck in the house. What we're going to do is we're going to buy an elliptical machine right when we can go outside again so we can make sure to never use it. And I can just <laughs> be going back to my gym. Um, but we like went into the city the other day. And we walked around. And what is really depressing to me is that like the day after I just go for a walk, like I'll be sore. Because, like, my muscles have atrophied so much. Like, just the walk to and from the subway that I would do five days a week that I haven't done in 10 months. Like, yeah. with, that, with that gone, like, my body, like, I get no movement. Like, yeah. and I'll be like, I'll be I'm like, why am I so sore? And I'll be like, oh, right. Like, I took I, 30 steps yesterday. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Right. 30, that's pretty good. But, um, no, there... Yeah, being staying in shape and staying healthy is is a hard to do these days. So don't beat yourself up, buddy. It's, are you gonna do um? Are you gonna do resolutions of some kind? Do you ever do that for the no, new year? I I try not to do resolutions. So I don't do resolutions every year. All mm -hmm. I do, I have this weird thing where I just aim to try and do something better than the year before. That's it. I don't know what it is gonna be. I don't know whether it's gonna be like you know, like better, make this show better, so whatever it might be, just yeah. do something better. Let's uh, keep it realistic, okay? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah just exactly. make the show better stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe go home every once in a while, and see the kids, <laughs> th that kind of thing. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try to drink more water. I'm not a water guy. I am not a water. That's, remember our episode on water bottles? Or it wasn't specifically oh on water bottles. Water but bottles. I, we just went to, we went to a zoo uh, the other day uh, out in New Jersey. Um, I can't believe it was, uh, uh, it, not only was it open, it obviously it was outdoors, so everyone was masked up. Masked uh -huh. up. But we saw some of the greatest animals. I've, like, when have you ever seen a lion, like, walking around in frigid cold temperatures or, like, it was great. It was super yeah, fun. Yeah, I don't think I've been to that. I've seen the zoo in cold weather because I've seen Rocky, too, and he goes to the zoo in the cold, and I think that's where he proposes to Adrian. But yeah. usually when I go to the zoo, it's, like, in August, and all the animals are hiding because it's so hot. Right, but, but there's nothing to do anymore. So, like, you basically try and find any outdoor activity. Well, why didn't you – because a few months ago in the summer – one of our, I got a hookup from one of our listeners to um, Great Adventure, the Six Flags drive through safari. Ah. And I talked about it. That was legitimately one of my peaks. Oh, one there of we my go. Highs of 2020. We saw just driving around, we saw so many animals. They were out and about. We were in the AC. We didn't have to mask up. We didn't have to get out of the car. And I was astonished at how good the thing was in terms of the amount of animals you saw and the quality of animals. There were some good looking great animals out there that day yeah well i mean look the ultimate my ultimate point was we walked for about two and a half hours and i carried uh, about 40 pounds of water bottles around as we walked and uh, but it's a fine because the kids eventually did have a sip of water once we got <laughs> back to, to the car so totally worth it i love this new paradigm where everyone drinks water every my five, kids whatever. love water my kids love water let me ask you something really quick so your your youngest is six Yes. When you go on something like that, do you bring a stroller? Not anymore. 
so that is that's a good question. I, uh, that is a change that we've done this year. So what, what we might do is we might bring a scooter mm -hmm. um, if uh, if if it permits the situation permits. Obviously, the zoo is not a scooter friendly kind of place, right. so that wasn't an option. But you know, he's he's old enough now. Right, yeah. but but do you, does he ever pull the you know pick me up kind of? Yeah. Thing? Yes, he does. And it's then I, I pull the fuck you card yeah, and I just I immediately issue it to him. I'm like, but this no. Is the thing. You don't bring the stroller for the kid, really. You bring it for yourself. Like, not only can you put the kid in it, and that's easier, or you can put bags and stuff in it, maybe your water bottles. It's nice to not have to lug the stroller around, especially when you like live in the city. That is, is good. But when you're in that one of those situations and the kid is like, pick me up, and you're like, I really don't want to pick yeah. this kid up. Now having some kind of stroller can be nice. Now that's a that's a parenting hack for sure. The 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 light foldable stroller that you actually yeah. doubles as a coat rack and, and yep. a place for water bottles. And every time the kid folder. gets out from it, it tips over because you have so much. On the back. <laughs> exactly. God, I hate that. Uh, I hate that. Ah, um, that okay, is so is that a peak or a pit for uh, for 2020? The fact that we're we we're done with the stroller. Well, I, I went. To, I told you I went into Midtown the other day, and we brought the stroller. So I guess I'm still, uh, I'm okay. still there. Well, you, I, got... I, I will keep my kids in strollers until they're 25 if it makes it easier. <laughs> if there's less whining involved. Yeah. Um, but it's funny because um, you mentioned is that a peak or a pit? And one of our listeners, KR8Z underscore, said peaks. <laughs> what fucking peaks? It's been a goddamn pit since March. Unless you want to count the days I didn't have a panic attack or cry myself to sleep as a peak, then sure. So <laughs> she's a little bitter about the year. Yeah. Um, which is understandable. It's been a tough year. So before we get into the big list, we want to remind everybody, you can listen to us on Apple, Spotify, uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts. I created a, a pod page. It's a website, podpage.com slash dad and buried, I believe. And if you go there, um, you can get links to every single platform that you would want to listen to uh, to us on. You can go to YouTube to see uh, Pete's sweet new cardigan and to leave comments under specific episodes. Um, and you can, if you want, you can leave us a review. We'd love for you to subscribe and leave us a rating on, a rating on Apple or anywhere else. Leave us reviews if, you, if you're feeling uh, prolific. I like that word. I've always liked that word, prolific. Yeah. Um, and if you want, you can even throw us a little bit of your, your, your money. If you have any left after a Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa from giving your kids whatever they want. My kid came in this morning and started to ask me and Mama Barry for something. We were both yeah. immediately like, if this costs money, you're not getting shit. Right? <laughs> yeah. Christmas was three yeah. days ago, my man. Yeah. Um, do you want to shout out really quickly, last shout out of the year for all the people who contribute a little bit of money to us via Anchor and Patreon. We got Ryan Miller and MS Babayan on Anchor. Molly Robertson, check your kids at the door. Chris Coleman, M. Daniel, Mallory McKenzie, Miriam, Tina Davis, Rob Gilbert, Lindsay Woodruff, Andrea Sandoval, Barbara Geiger, Bill D'Amica, Dana Bose, Jacques Ovar, Morning Glow, Cotton Farmer, AZ, Wes Clark, Jennifer Wynn, Julie McCarthy, Paula Polsky, Mary Williams, and Julie Burton contribute on, on Patreon. Thank you very much. We appreciate every little bit. Um, so obviously this year has forced us. We're no longer in the studio together, Pete. We do a lot of this via Skype. Um, it's looking like next year we might start, might have a guest or two aside from mom and buried once in a while, yeah. someone, uh, a, a prominent, a prominent couple in the space have, have asked to, uh, to be on. So we might bring those people on at some point next year, if we can figure it out. I mean, yeah. look, I, the Skype thing is cool, especially if you hit record, it's really <laughs> helpful. Um, it actually works a lot better if you record it than it does. not recording. And then just, you, it turns out that it's basically just been a conversation between you and I for an hour. <laughs> But it was it was nice to catch it up. It was it was a good conversation. Um, so we'll see what 2021 has to offer. But before we get into the new year, which has there's just so much hope. Mm. There's just so much hope, right? Isn't it mm. a wonderful thing? Hope. It is. It is a wonderful thing. It is. Uh, 2020 was a. You know, it's funny because the last year that things were was was sort of deemed a really shitty year it was 2016 i don't know if you remember that like that I do. Pe people were saying what a shitty year that was i think a lot of it was like celebrities and like like david bowie and like yeah dying like flies I think. yeah and then and then of course we had the election and yada yada um but yeah. but really 2020 was i mean it started with fires just yes. raging fires in australia then came murder hornets which, yeah. by the way, I've been following up on, and uh, it's not looking good. <laughs> really? Is there is there new news? Because they disappeared. Well, they, off the they, no, they didn't. They found they're finding nests now, like in Washington State. Okay. So yeah, they're they're really like 
feeling getting comfortable with uh, the west coast uh north northwest coast you know i i love the um i love the pacific northwest as a concept um yeah i visited seattle once and was there for like four days and it was lovely weather and it was amazing yeah. and it makes me think like oh i would you know i wouldn't mind living out here someday and now you mentioned murder hornets like setting up camp and i'm like I think I'm out on the on the PNW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't think that that's uh, that's not an option anymore. You would yeah. think that like the wildfires would would maybe burn burn those suckers to the ground, but are they improved? I guess they didn't reach that far up. Maybe well, the wildfires. So when we talk about peaks and pits, I think it's it's important. It's obviously we've been very divided about a lot of different things, but I think the one thing we can all come together on is how awful murder hornets are and how much we all collectively wish they would disappear for the face but they of the earth won't. but they have disappeared though i haven't heard from, anything about them. I don't from, have your, from your alert. social feed <laughs> yeah. your, they're gone it's gone they're just gone out of sight of, yeah. out of mind perfect mike 2021 here we come the definition of privilege if you don't care about murder hornets you know what it's because you're not impacted by them and it's just selfish all right but then you know what so then we have it's all about i think 2020 was the year of the parent i really do and here's why because obviously school and just remote learning would just flipped everything mm -hmm. on its head and you know as much as teachers are you know it are amazing and we obviously appreciate how much they do more than ever. Uh, well more than ever but then you know parents just they're if you're a working parent if you're not a working parent your life got flipped like got just completely disassembled and then reassembled. You're trying to work. You've got Zoom call. There was that period of time in March where it was like basically okay just to be like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, but yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't come to any of these meetings. Or if you don't mind me swearing <laughs> intermittently and telling goes, people to be quiet, then the same you know. goes for our kids too, right? For like from like March to like the end of the school year, it was kind of like. Nobody knows what they're doing. Yeah. There's a lot of leeway from like your your employer is probably like you know figured kids, out. Do, the get kids had it, done. The, the kids loved it. They were like, oh cool. So I can just be, the kids had like 17 million percent increase in screen time, right? <laughs> yeah, it's while, still while, increasing. While the while certainly I you know I had a I had an office mate for a little while, my 10 year old who yeah. um, who uh, fortunately halfway through our 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 relationship together learned how to burp. The alphabet, oh so that God. was good during during calls. Is that a Be peak or a pit? Uh, we're just gonna leave it just sort of neutral, like peak just chaotic. for her, pit for you. <laughs> yeah, chaotic neutral, exactly. <laughs> just burping the alphabet is. But then uh, September came around, and we were still yes. so suddenly you were there were standards, right? Like right. kids needed to actually learn. You needed to actually have been settled into learning how to work from home with your kids around and all that stuff, and yes. that actually made it harder, I think. Yeah, it made it harder, and this is where. Uh, and then I think ultimately, you know, we're we're in New York, and I, 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 my frustration was more at the at the teachers, the union itself, because like they just needed to get it together. They had six yeah. months to figure it out. We had those three horrible months at the end of well, last New year. Well, New York keeps yanking us back and forth too. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, I, but I do, I do. Anyway, I feel like we're in a better spot now. At the beginning, it was a little rocky, um, but uh, the I'm point happy. is. Yeah, I think I think we're we're in a better spot. Everyone knows kind of how to how to yeah. do their uh, their learning and uh, their routine. And it's and look, no more snow days. <laughs> you oh, know, from now God. on, it's just going to be like cool. Just you know, hop on Google Classroom and uh, and get your work done. So look, you're saying that you're frustrated at like the teachers' union and the situation and stuff. Can I tell you who I'm frustrated with? Yeah. Our listener uh, Elias underscore Lachance, who says his peak is that as a first time dad at 22, I'd say I've done well just trying to figure this all out. You're, you know what, fuck you, buddy, <laughs> right? You haven't done well. I don't know how old your kid is. It, this ain't gonna last. Look, I'm proud of you. You're 22, which automatically means I despise you and everything. Anybody who's more than two years younger than me, I just dislike on principle. Right. It's rude, it's rude to exist yeah. and have more of your life ahead of you. Right. But. It makes me feel better knowing that all his hopes and dreams are going to come tumbling down, especially in regards to how he's handling this whole parenting thing. He says he says something he has to overcome is being more patient with his family. Hey, guess what? You're not going to get more patient no. with your family, no. especially not as you get older, Mr. 22. Okay. No. I'm glad you're listening. We have a lot to offer, Pete and I. Um, if you like like bitter cynicism about how horrible yeah. parenting is, we're here for you. Um, we're proud of you, but 
It's really annoying to hear you say, as a first-time dad, you've got it all figured out, my man. Good luck. Well, I mean, look, first things first, it's... uh... I, I feel that the energy, your energy level, first of all, you're going to be able to hold the fact that you're not going to be a 65-year-old dad running around with a four-year-old. Maybe. We don't Maybe. know what's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, listen, d- p- patience, you know the speech, like, it gets better? It doesn't. It this is the better. opposite. And, by the way, uh, this podcast is really just us screaming into a pillow because mm-hmm. there's a lot of great things about parenting. Uh, but just there's also a lot that we just need to scream into a pillow uh like one for example i think um you know i think we've just spent too much time with our kids I'm oh my god put it out there i'm just gonna put More it out there we, oh by the way not just too much time with our kids too much time with the same human beings that just shouldn't happen right like no time in history has anyone ever been with someone for so long and it doesn't matter if it's your cool friend you know bud who you went to college with that you love <laughs> But guess what? If you're going to spend 24 hours a day, you're going to find things that are really annoying. And so this is what this is all about. It's just we've found out the limits of how annoying Bud can be by not brushing his teeth and leaving his socks everywhere. (laughs) And burping the alphabet. (laughs) And burping the alphabet, exactly. Which is really cool, which is one of the things Bud, your cool college friend, is known for. Um, I do want to say, like, for us, we were already annoyed with our kids and with everybody. And then we're put in this pressure cooker for nine months yeah. where we're with them and it's going to extend a few more months i do want to say obviously elias alias whatever your name is it's all in good fun we're just just poking poking some jokes is that what they say poking some jokes no, i don't know how 22 nope. year olds talk That's nobody not, says that yeah I, I hope i hope you continue to to do well um as a first time dad more power to you um yeah. Pete and i are not doing well and we yeah. like to <laughs> we like to vent no, we're not. as yep. a result yep. um and a lot of these comments are kind of a mix of some positive stuff and some negative stuff because we like to keep things real here. So the Terrence Davies said his highlight of the year was that he and his son built a beautiful garden, which is really just a wonderful father, bo- father, son bonding experience. And then he said the low light was that everything in the garden died, which pretty much sums up, <laughs> sums up the year. What Even you your small, you two steps forward, three steps back. Kind yeah. Of thing, right? Yeah. Everything died. Uh, a side note here. Um, he goes on to say, I'm not talking about the garden. Which Everything is, died. Yeah, yeah, which is Not which a is thing. a little little strange and a little cryptic, but okay. Mikey underscore in underscore NYC says the highlight was hearing his son say dad for the first time. The low light is the fact that his son will no longer stop saying <laughs> dad or dad dad. Does your kid did your kid ever say dad dad? I never got the dad dad thing. I I think so. I um yes, every once in a while uh uh my my son will say that, yes. I've tried to um, force my kids to call me father. Father? Yeah. May I father? They don't like that. No, it's better that's than strange. papa. Papa. Yeah. My my son will start every single sentence with dad. Just it doesn't matter, just a declarative sentence. Even if we were actually having a conversation. Yeah. And he in the middle will, of it, he just in the just, middle of it, he'll he's already he'll just, engaged. Yeah. yeah, he'll be like, Dad. And I'm like, uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm here. We're still, we're in it. We're in it. I'm looking at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but it's My not just, kid. it's not just dad. It's dad, just dad. Me. Like uh, as if like, uh, hey, uh, are you there? I'm like, I'm looking right at you, buddy. I'm right, we're here. Yeah, yeah. My my four year old who turns five in uh, a couple of weeks has recently started almost every sentence with guess what? Guess what? <laughs> Everyone. I said to him today, I'm like, can you please just stop? Saying guess. it's not even a guess. It's not even a question. It's just guess what? Can I have a snack? Like, <laughs> yeah. talking about. Yeah. But this is the thing. This is the double-edged sword that is that is parenting in 2020. Like, more time with your kids is great. More time with your kids is not always that great no. because it's just it's just too much. You have a capacity. Yeah. And we we bubbled over, right? Bubbled over that. Yeah. Except yeah. for Elias Lachance, who was just crushing it. <laughs> um, Michael. Michaela Marchesini says that their highlight was we made soap together and had a spa day at home. And then she says her low light was she lost it so bad one day she yelled at her kids and scared them and made them cry. First of all, that I've done that many times. Yeah. So scared my kids by yelling at them and made them cry all the time. And I, it would have been nice if she had done that before having the spa day because like she needs a spa day after that. But what I like, that's the kind of thing at the beginning of the pandemic, it's like, 
all right, we're going to make right. this fun. We're going to make it special. Right. We're going to have a little spa at home. And right. like in October, the fucking bullshit fake spa curtain you put up is hanging off the fucking drapes. It's still barely there. Everyone's angry. Right. You haven't actually been to a spa in months. Yeah. Dude, would, would your wife go to the spa? Would she bring the daughters to the spa ever? Like a makeover day? or? Um, yeah, so not a spa, like, you know, just, but definitely doing like nails and things like that. Yeah, for like sure. bonding yeah. stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, for sure they would do that. Um, so, and I think they've done a couple of those at home, but not the, uh, you know, not, not with the candles and the whole, you know, spa experience because we just simply just don't have the time or energy for any of that so is there anything that you miss that like not not the super everyday stuff that you would do with your kids but like i used to you know i would bring my kid to like the latest marvel movie or something right mm -hmm. like we would go to the movies and bond and the last movie i saw in the theater was actually i went with both my kids to see uh pixar's onward um, mm. and it's about brothers and it was, it was okay. And then like, we went to like a school event right after that. And then like the next day we realized we should not have gone to the school event or probably the movie theater because those are super spreaders. And now we're part of the problem. Um, but like just going to the movies like once a month or once every two months with my kids is something pretty, um, you know, generic that I miss, like kind of a normal thing. Do you have anything like that, that the pandemic stole from you? We, yes, the pandemic has stolen our ability, uh, especially winter. This The winter is coming. And now that we are here, yeah. going to the freezing zoo, um, it, you know, is not <laughs> the number one. Not ideal. Uh, yeah, I can no longer go to small land at Ikea, which was my number one oh, parenting hack. Yeah. Speaking of super spreaders, uh, that was a super spreader event way before COVID. But just I loved doing it because it was a great way to boost my kids' immunity because all, yeah. all of the diseases I ran were there. Into, uh, I was there with my kids one day, and I yeah. ran into your wife uh, with, yes. with, with your kids. That's right. But she wasn't doing the cool parenting hack where you wait in the line for small land, and then the person greeting you calls everybody by their first name, and everyone in the line starts looking around, like, confused. Like, how does this person – how does the Ikea person know oh, this name. man's <laughs> children? And then, and then immediately, instead of like getting a cart and going through Ikea, just simply sitting on the couch next to small land <laughs> yeah, on my phone just chilling, yeah. and just chilling for an hour and a half because I'm a family member, Ikea maybe, family member. Maybe Get involved. To a podcast. All right. You have that, like that membership thing that grants you privileges. Oh my God. And it goes from, it literally means that you can keep your kids in small land for an X for like 90 minutes. It, so it, it, what it are your 40, kids? Yeah. Is losing access to IKEA small yeah. end and 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 not being able to get the Swedish meatballs that IKEA. And then and then after that we would go yeah. directly to lunch and spend twenty bucks on this like really amazing yeah. lunch. It is pretty good. Yeah, it's it really good. really cool. Yeah. So anyway, that's what I missed. So, so we've had to fill our time with other things, right? So Pat and Jess G said her peak was every day I do crafts with my daughter and take her to a park for outdoor play. She also likes having more baths and snuggle time. First of all more bats is a peak for you nobody likes giving their kids bats ah but mike you're missing the point if the kid can give themselves a bath then then that's 45 minutes right there that's my classic go-to winter go-to move but, come home at three from ikea start the bath <laughs> and then you're you're in run up to dinner time son you start yeah. the bath at three it's four five boom Dinner you've, time. Got a whole, you've got a whole day oh. planned. You go to Ikea, you're there for a few hours, you have some lunch there, you get home, you plop the kid in the tub, and you're set for a couple more hours. They I come like out it. at 4.30, they watch TV for an hour, and then by the time it's dinner time, 5.30, and then you're on the downward slope. That's so, free. Pat and Jess G says that her, her pit was that she pulled her four-year-old daughter out of preschool and has failed to actually do any preschool at home. So I also have a, um, a preschooler at home. And the remote school situation really has nothing to offer, right? It's yeah. like there's a half an hour, like, greeting morning meeting where everyone says hi to their friends and they sing a song. And then it's like, all right, now, parents, take your kids and do the assignment right. for the day, right. right? And, like, crafts or science or whatever. <clears throat> and then maybe, like, uh, two hours later, you have, like, a, a half an hour music class where they just sing a song at you or something. And, like, the whole thing of preschool is like learning through play and like learning socialization, interacting. These my four year old had none of that this year, which is it's a little bit heartbreaking. That part of it is just like he's going to be behind just in terms of, you know, interacting with other people and and friends and yeah. stuff. But all kids, all the kids his age are pretty much um, in the same boat. 
Um, but I don't blame Pat and Jess G for uh, shirking their so-called, you know, remote schooling responsibilities when it comes with comes to a preschooler because there's not really much you can do. Um, so there's something that sounds horrible, but actually ended up being a peep. Annie R528 says she was laid off, obviously horrible. Um, and then they lived in a tra in a travel trailer outside of Fargo, North Dakota, with no Wi-Fi, which really sounds like an absolute nightmare. And she says it was actually a highlight. I think it might be nice this year. There was such a cavalcade, just a nonstop yeah. deluge yeah. of horrible news yeah. that maybe being cut off from it would have been a, a peak, as yeah. you like to call it. Yeah, um, <clears throat> right up until you find yourself in the middle of being in North Dakota, I think is the, <laughs> is the, the most, winter. well, not just that. I think it's like the highest infection rate of, uh, the oh yeah, you're right. So, yeah. There's like 11 so people there and nine and a half of them have it. Yeah. Yeah. Having a little bit of info would help, but, um, no, I, I do think, I mean, uh, hopefully that's not the case for her, but, uh, it, it does sound nice to be able to, to just cut off and, and, and not have to deal with all of this, uh, garbage stuff actually one thing that happened uh, th there was a few things i think that were quite nice i think we talked about the, we talked about this last time last episode <laughs> and then non recorded the last episode yeah but one of the things i think was really amazing was the fact that fomo disappeared mm -hmm. in 2020 so we had all these issues of fomo but in 2020 there was no fomo because everyone was at home so you could just be present with your kids. So, you could be, you know, you could think about going and doing something as simple as going to the park and just uh, be completely present with them to the point where you knew that there was nowhere else you could go or like there wasn't much else you could do. You know, there wasn't all the, all the options kind of got limited, which in many ways is actually I thought was quite a good good the thing. The bar but, was was lowered tremendously. So FOMO for those who aren't as hip as us is fear of missing out. And no one was missing out on much because we were all stuck inside. And what you're saying is that relieves some of the pressure of like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that because there wasn't that much to do. And also when you did go to the park, that was like going to Disneyland. It was like so exciting, right? Because you finally got to do a little yeah. something and go outside. Yeah. 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 And I think also just the idea that, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, should we do this this weekend or that? You know, the, just kind of limiting it down into this is this is our routine. This is all yeah. we can do. Um, was actually, uh, I thought, quite a quite a nice break from it's it's to go along with Annie uh, Annie's point, which is yeah, you, know, you just kind of cut off uh, yeah. from all of the deluge of all the options that you have, and you're seeing people do yeah. all these different things, and you're like, look, we can't, you know, I know that, you know, my everyone else is in the same boat, and just kind of having that shared experience, uh, I thought was actually quite interesting and uh, so. I, I have what I like to call JOMO, the joy of missing out. I love not doing <laughs> stuff, right? So yeah. for, for me, this was perfect. It yeah. was pretty much all set. For my wife, major FOMO, going stir crazy. We got to do this. We got to do that. Um, and you had to pick and choose your moments. What could you do? Like I was, like I told you before, I can't remember if we did this on air or not. Like I didn't go to my my parents for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, right. which, you know, sad on the surface, but we ended up making our own of it right. and just, we made some new traditions and there's probably some some stuff that we've learned that will carry over in the future even if we do go back for other holidays you just kind well, of had to make the best of things yeah that's kind of what i mean is that you just it, it allowed you to focus more and you know we've been doing the same kind of routines for the last like three or four years as the kids have kind of gotten to that median age and and this was this was great because like one thing uh we have a switch and yep. just i think it was day four uh, my son comes in, he was crying into the room and he was like in hysterical tears. And I'm like, what's, what's up? What happened? He's like, you're never, you're never going to do this, but I want, I want Zelda, the Zelda gay breath of the wild. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, he's like, you're never going to buy it. And I was like, you know what? It's quarantine. Like, let's just do it. Right. Like, it. and it was great. And that was actually became a real bonding experience. And we had, we had family, uh, Zelda, uh, nights with oh. the exception of my wife who boycotted it completely, washed her hands of it, said, I want nothing to do with this. And uh, that was it. So that was perfect. And she got some time to herself. <laughs> and she got, exactly. She saw an opportunity and she took it. She's a smart woman. She is a smart woman. So we're talking about routine and how in some ways that routine could be comforting and it allowed you to, to find small things that could break the routine that could be really exciting. 
A handful of people did some big things to break the routine, such as having children uh, <laughs> during, oh, the, during the pandemic. So um, Adriana Bitz, B-I-T-Z, said that having a second kid is both the best and worst thing she's ever done. So she had gave birth during the, during the pandemic, which must have been tough. Kay Slovak said she had her third kid nine years after having her second one. She said that could be a high or a low. And I understand that, like, my wife likes to talk lovingly about when, especially when we had our first kid, where for the next couple of weeks after having the first kid, it was like just us three in a right. bubble, you know, adjusting, doing a, a special little family situation. Right. We didn't care about anything else but ourselves. Um, and, and nowadays, if you were having a kid during a pandemic, you know, that must have been intensified by 100. And in a lot of negative ways where you couldn't have friends coming over to, like, give you food or to help out. You know, maybe you have an older kid to take the other kid somewhere or aunts and uncles to take your other kid somewhere or something like that. So you're stuck inside. If you have more than one kid and a newborn during the pandemic um, with the kid screaming and waking you up and all this, I can't imagine. I mean, obviously, it's a joyful time to, to bring a new life. <laughs> into the Boy, world do you, do you write for disney because <laughs> okay, okay yeah but this I've, is got a to, I've had to have been hard i wonder what it will be like to like look back in like 10 years and be like that first year of like having a newborn during a pandemic it must have been scary especially at first when like depending on where you live when like the numbers are high and all that stuff and doctor's appointments are different because you can't necessarily all go in and all that shit it's nuts well, I mean, I th yeah, but it, it kind of goes back. You you said it with this bubble, the bubble of being together as a family unit that when you first bring your kid home, I think the scary part, at least in, in my mind, the way it would be the hospital, you know, just yeah. it, that's kind of, you're in the epicenter, right? And you're, you're nervous and you don't know what's happening. I can't imagine that. But once you're home, that concept of the bubble, that's that's sort of what I'm talking about. That uh, You know, and, and I think that could actually be quite nice to be in that bubble and, and also feel that there's other people who are going through the same thing and, and not necessarily exactly the same because they're not they don't have a newborn but they have this right. concept of like it's just us right yeah. it's just like it's us just against us. The world. Yeah. us against the world and that's why we need so much toilet paper so just <laughs> shut up kids get as much toilet paper as you can because this disease warrants the run on toilet paper that we saw earlier in the year, a hundred percent. So you that's are being why. sarcastic. I can sense it. No, but uh, no, I do. I do think that 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 bubble, uh, it, 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 that that's kind of a nice thing to be able to have it that, nice. that feeling. But as yeah. you said earlier, it can it can get old. Um, you're being can, around can. the same people with no variety. Uh, <laughs> and then you're just looking for reasons to pop that bubble. Yes, exactly. So Nikki Marlowe says the highlight was how much closer we all became. The oh. low light was the children themselves, which is really <laughs> sums up sort of the, the philosophy That's of the amazing. podcast. Children oh are God. the problem. Um, yes. JL Wad 1028 says my son is three and in speech therapy, he had trouble with the F sound, but can now say fuck properly. So that's a peak Yay. and a pit. That's great. It that's is fantastic. Great. Congratulations. So a handful of people, and I know some of them myself, um, like you said, you bought Breath of the Wild because you're kind of like, it's quarantine, you know, right. we got to get through it somehow. Some people did make kind of like purchases or do special things. So Mimosas with Moms, who has a, a good podcast of her own. Um, and she she had a kid, I believe, if I remember correctly, she had a kid during this situation as well. Oh, wow. She says that she bought a bouncy house for the inside of her home. How high are your ceilings? Well, first of all, that's a solid flex. It is, is a big to flex. Just buy a bouncy house for your home. That's just like a solid move. And congratulations on your awesome house. Don't basically. hurt yourself, though, because you don't want to go to the ER. You don't want to like break an ankle in the bouncy house. That's a great, first of all, that is a great idea especially for the winter time if you have the space get a bouncy house because these kids kids or these kids, kids hello uh they need to run and you need to bounce them and and just getting in there throwing some elbows and being like what happened i was going through uh my phone like deleting some stuff and earlier in the summer we have a very tiny backyard like a little square backyard in, in brooklyn and i had footage of at one point in the summer I had told my kids to see how many times they could just run in a circle in the little tiny backyard and I'm just like they're doing it and I'm like all we're doing is trying to get them tired out and they're just running around can you beat your brother can you do exactly. more than him they're doing like 30 in a row so the bouncy house is a lot of people I think bought like trampolines or some people yeah. did like you need to have co contained fun in your backyard what's shocking is that she bought it for the inside of her house 
I don't necessarily know how that works. I'm going to reach out to her, ask her for some photos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like bouncing into the ceiling. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that, those things are fun. Yeah. We, yeah. We, uh, we bought a hot tub. All right. You bought one of those yeah. like, inflatable hot tub things? Yes. Yeah. So, so you're not the only one who can flex, okay? Yeah. So we, yeah. No, we, How long we, were you waiting? Just the, you've been waiting this whole podcast just to mention. That <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. I try, cool? I try and slip it into any conversation. I we bought the Coleman or whatever the Sally spot, like just an inflatable one, right? And it was incredible. It was How awesome. How many times have you been in it? Uh, like four. That's it. When did you I, get it? I packed it up. Well, we, I, because uh, it's inflatable, we packed it up. So I, I we bought it. I think in May. I had it for the summer and then had it into the like September. I think we put it away or October. So you um, can't use it in the winter. It gets too cold. It will like pop. You, you No, you can. It's really pretty rugged. But the really cool thing about it, and I don't know. You know how most spas are like all molded plastic and it's, yeah. you know, they're all just basically chairs that are underneath water. Yeah. This one was just around. It was like a big, it was like a pool, like a small Okay. Like a, like an inflatable pool, yeah, right. so it allowed the kids to kind of swim and be more kind of active in it, which I thought was really but fun. You and of course, can use it as a pool if you want, right? Like yeah, just totally. well, regular water in it. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's what we did. My point is, is that's all it was. It's just a big inflatable pool that got that gets really hot. It's awesome. But, right, but but I don't like. I feel like hot tubs in the summer, um, using it as a regular pool is great. Yeah. But like a hot tub in the winter is the key time for a hot tub. I want you to bust that thing back out. I know, I know. But we, it was so we, like I said, we had it up until October. I just didn't want to deal with like the ice and the shit. I hear you, I hear you. Just, I, I, I had, don't like I, to deal with anything, so <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I can't believe you even bought it. So Mbach04 also flexed. He says he bought our son. He says, I bought my son a bow and arrow. And then he shot our brand new AC unit, <laughs> which cost $1,200 to replace. I just hope he got the government stimulus yeah. before he had to replace it so he could use that. Rather than for rent or food and water, yep. he could use it to replace the AC that his kid yeah. broke on him. Yeah, yeah, with that bow and arrow. Nice. Unbelievable. Smooth. So this is this is the, the kind of the bar we're setting here. So WVU underscore alum underscore SUNY alum, bragging about her education, okay, says – her peak was that we didn't kill each other. Really? Wow. Like, that's that is kind the, of it. That right? is actually, that's it. She nailed it. That's all you need. Like there's the, like you were saying, with like school in like March, it was kind of like, and work, it was kind of like, well, if you get it done, you know, hopefully we're all adjusting. Right. And it's very much just kind of like everybody's lowering the bar, being like, all you do what you got to do to get through this nightmare. Nobody anticipated the nightmare to actually become our lives for like a year. Yeah. Um, you know, and hopefully there's there's light at the end of the tunnel. We'll see. Um, but that's the thing. The expectations have started to shift as we've adjusted, right? Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden, you've got to start accomplishing things, which is not it's, no. it's Yeah, no, no. I want to go back. I think there are definitely going to be things that we're going to miss about this COVID, the, 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 these bubbles that we, we created for ourselves. Um, 100%. So. So yeah. Kelly A. Tut, A-T-U-T, says her peak was enjoying outdoor activities so much more this summer as a family, but her pit is being told that her child is a grade level behind after distance learning, right? So yeah, that's a shame. That's the thing. Like, we, as we're acting with FOMO that we're kind of all in it together, whenever my wife gets concerned about, like, oh, what's happening to the kids or whatever, I'm kind of like, all the kids are pretty much in the same boat, right? At least yeah. in your local areas, right, for the most part, the yeah. situation for everybody is sort of the same. Um but some kids definitely, like I have a kid with ADHD and getting him to focus on like remote learning and stuff is a lot harder than him, like having a teacher in class to be able to come with him and help him focus on a math problem or whatever. Yeah. Um, and some kids definitely struggle more than others. And that is a shame, right? Like if this does really impact things beyond. And I think there's, look, there are going to be kids in therapy 20 years from now who are like that year in the freaking quarantine fucked me up. Yeah. Right? My dad didn't wear pants the entire year, <laughs> the entire Year. Just the cardigan and nothing else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I was gonna say the uh, uh, I have we're going into the we're doing the high school admissions process in New York City as well oh, as yeah. the middle school admissions process during this school. year, yeah. and it is it is it's horrible. Literally, nobody knows anything. Like All that's just virtual, like virtual <laughs> like tours and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, virtual tours, but every. The, the the information is always the same. It's we just don't really know how, how it's all going to work. So mm -hmm. let's just keep doing it. And as deadlines get moved and keep getting pushed back, you're like, well, where's my kid going to go to school? Who and knows? they're like, and everyone's like, I don't know. 
<laughs> so that's fun. Um, so speaking of school, this may be my favorite comment um, for the week and maybe forever that we've ever gotten. I Heart Ethiopia says her peak was that her daughter got engaged. She didn't say peak and pit. I'm just I'm just extrapolating. Said her peak was my daughter got engaged. Her pit was that her fiance put law school on hold to write porn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm desperate to know what kind of porn is he writing? Yeah. Porn screenplays? No, yeah. Is he writing like he's I, I writing don't... letters to Penthouse Forum. Like he's not even getting paid. He's just trying to get one printed. He's just Did, writing a letter. Does this fiance even know how porn works? Uh, the writing <laughs> part? Like I'm not sure writing how, how much writing has to do with it. Yeah. If you want to break into porn, maybe writing isn't the main main is, gateway. Is he writing treatments for scripts? Is I he know. is he doing rewrites? What's happening exactly? It's not a lot of dialogue. I am desperate to know. I heart Ethiopia. Um, I will tag you when I share this. I need more details. Um, and if he has like a pen name, like a funny pen name, like Buck Naked or whatever, like a porn star might have, please let us know because we we need to we need to know more than that, more than we've got. Um, so Lainey Davy says her peak was that her kids were playing Lego a lot, which is true. And especially yes. after Christmas, my kids got a bunch of new Lego sets. They love it. And they built like her kids built like elaborate things like a concert and a beach with a bar, um, which I always find that interesting because you get the Legos and I don't know if, her, if she bought like a beach with a bar set or if the kid just improvised, right? Because we have so many Lego pieces. You can build whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but the challenge we have with the Legos is like my kid got like a big Mandalorian Lego set, which is like you build the big ship and then he wants to play with it. You can't play with it. It will shatter. It's like a, it's like a sculpture now. You can't play with it. My wife is like, you got to super glue it. I'm like, you can't super glue fucking Lego uh, thing together. No, you want to use these pieces later. That's the thing. For a little while, it's like they want to play with it. Can't touch it. Leave it somewhere else. And then eventually it just starts to fall apart. And then the three hundred dollars because these Lego sets are crazy expensive. They Being are spent super expensive. On these sets now yeah. it's just we have honestly like probably like five billion Lego pieces all over, and that's not counting the ones that I sucked up with a vacuum every day. Well, I, yeah, I mean our our philosophy is like you get, you got to play with it, but it's you just got to put it in. A, eventually, after six months, it's all going to go in a box. Yes. Meaning like all jumbled together with all the other pieces and whatever so, you know you'll find a torso of something or like an arm of a, yeah. like a dragon claw or something exactly it, you just it, it has to go it has to be recycled like you're never gonna see that finished mandalorian right. no. razor crest no. ship no. ever again no. once it you finish it it's perfect for like that two hours so play then, with it enjoy it that was part of the fun was building it and then just photo. say goodbye to it yeah exactly yeah, exactly it is all gone um so Mitch Maxwell says the worst thing <laughs> that they did was they got fish and the kids were super excited, but they've had them for a month and seven of the eight fish have died. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just fish. Well, you got to You definitely have to put them in water. Um, oh, that, that helps. That. Yeah, that helps. That would have mm -hmm. been good. So yeah. Jay Hoove Watson, Jay, Jay Hoove Watson, H-O-O-V Watson says that his, uh, their peak was watching the entire Wonder Years with their kids. Have you have you tried to show your kids any TV shows you liked growing up? Well, you didn't like anything. What, what do they even have in England? Mm, they didn't really have much. Doctor really. Who? The no, original they just, Doctor Who? They had uh, like just a, a, like a picture of a loaf of bread that you would just watch over a few months period. Oh, that just kind great. of slowly. decompose, yeah, slowly into the ground. That that and darts. That I've watched great. I've watched uh, The Mandalorian with my kids, which when we do that, much like your wife during um, Zelda sessions, yeah, my yeah. wife is just off doing whatever she wants, having some alone time. And yeah. I'm watching The Mandalorian with my kids. I haven't really gone back and like shown them old. There's just so much old stuff i don't even know where to begin i think i tried an episode of the wonder years and my kid is like he thinks of like it's like the 60s and 70s and he's like oh i don't want to watch that it, even though it was made in the 80s it looks a little older than modern stuff and i'm right. like buddy i'm like star wars was 1977 and you still like that yeah yeah where's your logic now son <laughs> <laughs> exactly it, 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 somehow i'm not able to convince him but yeah. no we haven't watched the wonder years even though I liked that show as a kid, I don't like it as much as many people do. We don't. There's not a lot of shows. Oh, Simpsons. We got into the Simpsons, but my kids they like this like um, these awful shows like Some Assembly Required, which is outlawed. I just can't. It's I don't just, know what that it's is. It's a mindless. Uh, there's. It's just a mindless t kids TV show from mm -hmm. like it's I don't know Disney or something. I don't, I don't know that and. Um, 
what's there's like a band a boy band show i forget what it's called oh god anyway those two shows i just if i hear them on i'll just say you can't you just you can watch anything else i don't care watch like it i don't care <laughs> just i'd rather have something wants anything. to watch it yeah no but we watched uh, goonies uh we did a couple christmas movies so we watched goonies into the woods it was, oh, was into uh, the woods Ugh. it is it's horrible how was goonies great How'd they like it they really liked it yeah we i love um my son, my, 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 my five-year-old was, you know, did the, did the thing where he's like looking through his yeah. hands at a few of the parts. That was so cute. I love that. We, um, we watched the Wonder Woman 1984 that came out on Christmas day. Um, oh, yeah. It's impossible to overstate how bad this film is. Oh no. <laughs> really? It's so bad. And I heard, oh, I heard that it was bad like a couple days before and I'm like, how could it be this bad? And then like 10 minutes in, you're like, oh. I get it. Oh, it's damn. two and a half hours. Because the first one was great. Yeah, the first one it has some really good moments. This one has maybe none, maybe none uh, good moments. It's so, the plot is just so, I couldn't believe it. But like, I literally tweeted this 15 minutes in. I said, I'm like, wait, this is the plot? I'm like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's really not good, unfortunately. Okay. Unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, look, somebody complained that they did so much screen time. So, Alka, Alka Sprisky says, uh letting my preteen stay up way too late during summer with screen time that's a low light i guess not for me screen time we loved it all year long we're gonna keep loving it look yeah. obviously we're like a pop culture family i'm a pop culture movie tv guy right my kids were already kind of into some of that stuff um this year limits out the window um we're probably gonna try to reel that back in 2021 if we can um but again you just gotta survive right and and i'm not yeah going to wring my hands too much over uh how much screen time my kids got this year um but i don't know about you do you feel bad about too much screen time for your children not not really it depends on what they're doing for example minecraft screen time is fine i yeah, have no i really don't have a activity yeah. yeah i really don't have a problem with that um it just kind of depends uh <laughs> uh my we, my five-year-old got into, or six-year-old, got into Prodigy, which is like a math game. Oh, yeah, my game. kid does that, yeah. And he, so he asks for it, and he's doing math, and I'm like, sure, dude, go, go ahead. It. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah so it, it kind of depends. My, my teenager, um, she's, you know, on uh, social media or doing the TikTok dance stuff, and so I, I, we're, we're limiting. It? What's that? I said, who isn't doing the dance stuff? On well, TikTok? that's it. That's it. That's it. So you know, we're... Robot. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, yeah. come on. Anyway. No, the whoa. I don't know what that is. You got to do the whoa. Come is on. Is it Mike. like the Dougie? I just What's know that? some of the terms. Is it like the Dougie? I think no, that's like not. 10 years old. It's the whoa. Even the whoa is old. The whoa is so January of this year. Oh, my God. It is like, that might as well be 20 years ago. Exactly. Um, so a couple of last ones. So Ruby underscore low blow, um, a loyal, loyal commenter, says that she's loved the quality time at the board games she's had with her kids. A five-year-old that started reading. She did have one major pit was when her girl broke her arm and she let it go overnight before getting x-rays because she thought her daughter was just being dramatic. <laughs> Listen, I, can I understand that. I know, but also I think that that's kind of the right move. You, some, you don't, you know, unless... You don't, yeah, you don't know. You don't always yeah. know. And sometimes it just, if it wakes you, they wake up and it still hurts, fine. Yeah. Then you go. They uh, don't know the difference between, uh, um, you know, being hurt or being injured, right? And uh, right. they react the same to every single thing, whether they've right. just been shot in the kneecap or they stubbed their toe. So, yeah, give it 12 hours. See where, see where it shakes out. Yeah. And then take them to the ER if you have to. Yeah, but you can pretty much tell a gunshot wound to the kneecap. So... <laughs> Maybe if you're paying attention. Yeah. Um, so DKC 1299, maybe we'll wrap up on this. Had a, uh, she, he said his peak was his seven-year-old daughter got out of bed and walked into the living room one night when they were watching TV. And he says, what's wrong? And she said, I can't sleep because I'm afraid. And he said, what are you afraid of? And she said, Michael Jackson. <laughs> so this, this is why you don't watch Leaving Neverland with your kids. Right, right. It's a tough documentary for the younger set. It's a, you really need to, they need to be at least six um, so that they can fully understand what's going on because that is a heavy, heavy documentary. My kid, so the other day um, we, we went on a walk like to see the Diker Heights Christmas lights, this area in Brooklyn where they go crazy with lights and floats and stuff um, or inflatable things. 
and we were with some friends all masked up and one of the my my son's friend told him a story she had heard that santa um like if you're awake when santa shows up santa's like partner the sandman you sprinkle something on your eyes and you're blind forever <laughs> like so like on christmas he told it like on christmas eve my kid couldn't sleep because he was scared of the sandman who like i don't know his santa's evil wingman i had yeah. never heard this before um but that kept him up on christmas eve which was great um because then we weren't able to like do all the stuff we needed to do until right. like 2 a.m yeah that's fun I, I heard something about a dark elf we we're talking to a, a my brother and his, mm -hmm. his wife who's british and she's saying the dark elf I'm like what? That's Thor too. The dark. Yeah, elf. <laughs> exactly. Do you do you guys do Elf on the Shelf? No, thank God. No. I know it is annoying. Right up until this year, where I kind of mixed it up and started to get really hardcore with it. Like, yeah, you want to find this thing? Try and find it. And so it you made it a challenge. Yeah, and it occupied it was one room, our kind of kitchen living room area, and I was like, just try and find this little fucking thing and my son would get up every morning and it would occupy i mean he would just sit there looking around the room for like an hour and then eventually sometimes he would just come up and get it, it was a it became a whole i got very competitive with him and i wanted to take him down uh unfortunately <laughs> he kept he kept besting me uh which is not unusual for most six-year-olds so can do but that why don't you just be like all right guys you got to find the elf but then just never hide the elf just, you never have to do anything. Just he's in your trunk of your car, and you're just like, I guess you guys didn't find him today, and you never have to do anything. All because the hell, elf hack. No, because my son actually checked the trunk of my car. He said, "Well, <laughs> yeah. he's not here. There's 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 a lot of duct tape. There's some rope, but he's just no elf. plastic covering yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it was fine. And then if the if the elf didn't move, one night, let's just say. There were a lot of theories, and there was a yeah. lot of backstory as to <laughs> why the elf, yeah, why the elf didn't move. Yeah, it was good. That's yeah. fun. So I, I think my biggest peak of the year is um, not doing Elf on the Shelf. Um, just a relief, just a wonderful tradition we have is not doing that. Um, and I'm going to continue to not do that, whether this is a pandemic or not, just because it's really just a really it's just a lovely pastime not right. doing the elf. Yep. Yep. No. Congratulations if you've sidestepped having to do Elf on Shelf. Congratulations if you're locked into it because one or more of your family members has made that happen. Then just lean into it. Yeah. And get, you know, get tactical with it. That's actually good. That's actually good advice, right? So sometimes you get forced to do stuff you don't want to do. Like we were forced to weather this pandemic and and change up our parenting styles and our routines and all that stuff. And you can either sit back and bitch about it and scream into a pillow like I do and like we do um, in every episode of this podcast, or you can lean into it and try to make the best of it, which is not something I'm good at and not even right. really interested in trying to do. Um, but I really, you know what? I yeah. applaud you, Pete, for you putting your best foot forward and trying to make the best of uh, Elf on the Shelf and everything else this year. And now my whole family knows how to scream into a pillow. So <laughs> it's great. Well, it's been fun doing the podcast with you this year. It's yes. especially fun doing the Peaks and Pits episode just because I get to say Peaks and Pits and you hate it so much. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I look forward to, to more um, peaks, peaks and Pits and pits of the podcast. Ah, uh, look at you. We'll be back you. next year. Um, Mom and Barry will, will join us on some episodes. We might have some special guests if we can make that work. As always, we, we rely on the input and interactions of our fans and listeners. You can get us on Apple, on Spotify, on my um, podpage.com slash dad and buried, where you can, you know, listen to however you want to listen. You can follow me on Instagram. You can't follow Pete because he doesn't believe in social media. Um, and you can, you can, you know, shoot, shoot me a DM. Today, somebody called me a cunt in my DMs. You know, it's just the way it goes. <laughs> okay, there you go. You know what? I'm used to it. And I, you know what? A lot of times. I enjoy it. And if you're lucky, Listen, maybe I'll share your uh, your screenshot, a screenshot of you calling me a cunt and you yeah. defend me for a while. And by the way, I'm sorry about that. I was just testing out <laughs> my ghost accounts and uh, something must have slipped. So, all right, Mike, have a good one. Happy New Year to you and Happy New Year to everyone else out there. Happy New Year, Pete, and Happy New Year to all the listeners. We will be back in 2021. And look, it can't possibly be worse. Don't you goddamn say that, you son I'm of knocking gosh. on wood. Okay. We're, all right. we're safe. All right. Bye, all everybody. Right. Thanks for recording this time. Yep. <laughs>
I don't know why you would still be watching this isn't a Marvel movie, no matter how much I look like Paul Rudd, which you can deny it all you want. It's there in the eyes, I think. I'm young looking like him. If you enjoyed the podcast, which you obviously did or you <laughs> wouldn't be listening still, sign up on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you want to listen to. Comment here on YouTube. Subscribe. Hit that like button. We want to hear from you. Comments, questions, dirty jokes, money, all the money you can give us. We'd love it all. Catch you next time.